<laughs> See? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> I just got to the underground parking lot in downtown Montreal. I'm going to, trying to find City TV where breakfast television is being shot. And I have no idea where the address is, so I Googled it. Hopefully this is the right place. If not, I mean, I'm early, so if not, I might have to find another way out. So the security guard just informed me that to get out of the parking lot, I gotta go through this like mall, but the mall might be closed, and so there might not be a way out. <laughs> All right, so I made it. It's really cold out. For breakfast television. Chris? Yes. Thanks. So, I'm here just waiting on my segment. I've got about a half an hour to kill. 45 minutes. Probably gonna mic me up and that'll be it. So, I guess, shuffle cards. All right, so I got back home to edit this, and this is after the fact, this is way after the fact. I made a video a few days ago about really bad online performances, and a lot of you really thought it was funny, but some of you actually got a little bit offended and said, well, Chris, why are you shooting down magicians and blah, 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 because it was funny. Like, if you don't see the comedy in that, I can't help you. This is probably not a channel for you. But that being said, I am able to laugh at myself as well now. Which brings me to this video. So I got invited to Breakfast Television Montreal, which was fun, which was fantastic. The interview went great. The magic trick it went okay, but we're gonna look at it in detail. So I think one of the strengths in being able to have a video of yourself performing is being able to analyze and criticize yourself. So together, we're gonna watch my performance and we're gonna see exactly where I went wrong and what I did right and what I could have maybe changed uh, in hindsight. And these are all the types of things that will help you grow as a performer and especially on TV. TV is such like, this is the second time I do live TV and I don't know if you guys remember the first time I did breakfast television, also almost went horribly wrong. So I have this I have this way of choosing like the wrong tricks for TV, I guess. I thought it was a great trick because it involves shuffling, it involves a magic trick, which is kind of what my channel's about. Let's let's take a look at this video together. I will put my headphones in so that I can hear what's going on and that you guys don't get this weird interference. So this one's for all you guys, all you haters out there who who think that I only laugh at other people and I don't take a look at myself. Well, that's the one thing about comedy, first of all, is you should be able to laugh at yourself before, above all, and then laugh at other people. So. Let's let's take a look at me here and what I did wrong in this next cringe-worthy section of the vlog. Here we go. 
Welcome back to Breakfast Television. We have with us today one of the finalists for the first ever YouTube Next Up graduates. I'm joined by Montreal magician Chris Ramsey. That's Chris, me. welcome to the show. Great Thank to you. have Thanks you here. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about your how you fell in love with magic. Take us back to when that, when that was that first time it kind of struck you. I want to do magic. So, I mean, it's a bit cliche, but like my grandfather showed me an old coin trick where he okay. made it disappear, and that kind of got me intrigued. But it wasn't until I think David Blaine had his very first TV special when I was a teenager so watching far, so that. Good. It was really, really just like brought me into magic. So it wasn't Copperfield or any right. of the stage illusions, but more of the close up stuff. And so you do a lot of you do a lot of entertaining. I, I imagine mm-hmm. you do like corporate yeah, parties corporate and events. that sort of thing. And then you decided you wanted to go out into the streets and start videotaping. Why that decision? Yeah. Um, again, it stemmed from the whole you know that that whole movement of doing oh, cool. magic to people who aren't necessarily anybody, just people on the street. Showing and some sort of them out of their footage and changing it up on my bit. channel, so which is pretty cool. Way of sort of that was pretty clean. And did you think that it would? Get I wish I would have done that on TV. Um, I know magic is popular and it's been popularized obviously lately with yeah. movies and TV shows and everything. So I did sort of know that anybody recognize that flourish? Magic. So, you know, I had a it wasn't it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like some boring pastime, yeah. it was something fun to watch. So let, let's talk a little bit about the YouTube Next mm-hmm. Up program itself. How did you find out about that? Um, actually I just got a notification on YouTube one day when I was just like going through my stuff <laughs> and it was like I like how they showed the uh, the Sharpie in the deck, and then nothing. <laughs> that was good. It popped up, and I said, you know what? I'm going to sign up for this, just not thinking about it. Fast forward a few months later, and I got accepted, and I won this sort of contest to get in there. So Yeah, and then the contest, because you're one of the finalists, I guess you went to a camp in Toronto, is that right? Yeah. Tell it was us a, about that experience. It was a week-long camp, basically like a six-month intense a cinematography and production course crammed into five days. Wow. Yeah, okay. so it was really intense, but a lot of fun. Learned a lot about cinematography, production, sound, lighting, that type of thing, as well as got to collaborate. Now, I mean, so far, I'm fucking killing this interview. Like, super confident. I know my lines. I know what I'm supposed to talk about. I could literally host this show. Like, not a problem. I feel completely at ease at this point. Um, you know, before going up, I thought... When I first did like a TV appearance in my life, I was super nervous. It was like, I, did, I thought I was going to forget everything. And at this point, I'm just at the point where, you know what? I'm going to walk in there and just own it. This is my stage. These people are here for me and I'm going to give them something to talk about. And that was the sort of mindset I went into. I don't know if that helps. Great with a lot of other YouTubers. So you've been able to incorporate that then Definitely. Into, into some oh, of your, your YouTube. What advice would you give to people out there that, you know, want to, you know, I mean, uh, everyone wants to monetize yeah. it, but just to get that start, even to start getting a following. I would say, honestly, just put stuff advice. out there. Just, just yeah, go ahead and create stuff because you're never going to be happy with the product that you create as like you're just self, you know, criticizing. Just get it out there and then move on. And you'll learn from that much well, more. Well, you're going to show us a trick because speaking go. of learning, one of, you, one of the things that you also do is, is you teach people. That's correct. Right? Some Absolutely. magic tricks. And I'm going to teach you how to shuffle cards because I do that on my channel as well. Yeah. But as well, we're going to teach you a magic trick at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to have you hold this half of cards. All right. And you're just going to shuffle off one card at a time. Just one card. One card. Just strip off one. So at this point, he's like, he's already, sh- like, I need him to shuffle one card after another for this trick to work. Okay. I'm not going to divulge the trick, but I need him to shuffle one card at a time. He's already shuffling a block, so he's not listening. So how do I handle this? Let's see. One card from the front. Okay. No, no, with, for, with your thumb. So just hold, with my thumb. Yep. Okay. So hold it in your. <laughs> there okay, you go. Gotcha. Okay, we're getting right. it. Hold it off with your thumb. Just okay. one. Just oh! one. No, no. On. The flash. Look at that. It. D- okay. I had no idea this camera angle was there. I thought we had the one camera angle. This is a terrible camera angle for this trick. Completely flashing what I, what I don't need to be flashing. So, this is basically turning into a tutorial. On this hand. On this hand. Yeah, exactly. Oh, just I'm like just this. pushing it up. No, you're pulling it down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pulling it it's down. Good. It's great. So, okay, one. This is going no, no, well. No. Keep, All right. it, keep it in your hand. Okay. 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 And then two. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Okay. Uh, four. And you just, he's, he doesn't really understand the concept of shuffling. And the funny thing is, before I got in into this interview, I asked him, I was like, are you, do you shuffle cards? He's like, oh yeah, I love cards. I love shuffling cards. So I was like, oh, great, this is going to work so well. Little did I know. So he's basically not even shuffling cards. I don't even know what he's doing at this point. Um, I'm getting kind of nervous because I'm like, ugh. Now, at this point, I could switch decks and the trick could go on. The reveal wouldn't be as great, 
but it would be a lot cleaner. But I didn't do that. In hindsight, I probably should have. I kind of like direct him at this point. Let's see if we can catch it. Keep shuffle him on top, just like that. Okay, you've, you've obviously <laughs> done this before. So, I've, I've only done <laughs> no, this, Chris. So, yeah. so I just, <laughs> I literally reach in and I'm like, all right, let me just shuffle these cards for you. Uh, uh. Well, the old. Here's what we're gonna do. I was like, no, stop! You can't shuffle that. Just hold it. Okay, we're gonna do you this. You show instead. me how it's done. We'll do this instead. Uh, right. Spread the cards out a little bit. Okay. Take some cards from the middle. All right. And throw them on top. Perfect. Do that one more time. Okay. Take some cards from the middle. Throw them on top. And the last thing we're gonna do is called like a distribution shuffle. So we're gonna deal down four packets. So at this point. I am clean and fair. Everything is great. The dirty work is done. Obviously, you've, you and everybody who's watching saw the dirty work. But, you know, that still leaves... For lay people, I think they don't, they don't even get this, you know. And it's kind of comedic as well. I think a lot of people are, are kind of jokingly saying, Ah, oh, you know, this guy's not too good with cards. So it kind of turned out okay for the lay people. For the magicians, not so much. Just like this. One, two, three, four. Okay. We'll actually have a race so you can get done first. Ready? Go. All right, here we go. So, as you know, on my vlog a few days ago, I don't know about that, Chris. Okay, I'm done. I did this trick, and I was sort of like just refining it because I needed to practice it because I knew I was going to do it on TV. Um, so I said we teach you also how to shuffle. It's the same that, trick. Right. That, that didn't go so well. That, that was okay. Uh, it wasn't but, a teaching problem. But, it was a user problem. <laughs> not to worry, Chris. I was also going to teach you how to do a trick, and so let's see how I did because I'm a magician. Obviously, this works out for me really well. <laughs> um, but you shuffle those cards. So in case you can't see at home, by the way, it's all kings right across the board. So here. let's I see. Shuffled let's mine. see how you did. Let's see. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> One, two, three, four. See, you did a little better than I did. You, you might be actually a natural. You should, you should probably well, start and looking at the magic. And I had the aces high yeah. <laughs> on your low kings here, Chris. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I, I made mentioned... up for the shuffling skills during the trick. Yeah, that, exactly. I mentioned before, that, before the show that I've been watching your YouTube mm. channel. And just terrific work, by the way. Thank Congratulations you. on all your success. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us here yeah, on BT. Thanks for having we'll be me. back with more right after this. Don't go anywhere. So that was it. Um, as you can see, the trick went horribly wrong in the beginning. I did catch up at the end and I did get the ultimate reveal and a great reaction. Obviously he's a TV host and he probably puts him on, but I think he was generally fooled. I think genuinely he didn't know how that trick worked even though, cause he, he wasn't seeing what was under the cards like you guys were. Um, so all in all, I think in hindsight, I could have maybe done something differently. I could have maybe done a different trick or taken the cards, but these are the type of things that you realize once you do it. And this is the point I wanna make, is that just like I said in the video, you know, sometimes it's not about doing things perfectly the first time. Sometimes it's about putting yourself out there, being creative, trying new things, and it won't always go to according to plan, especially in this art form, in this craft, because what we do is performance art. We don't play an instrument uh, alone. We don't uh, paint on a canvas. No, we use people as part of our art form, and that's what makes it a performance art. We have to perform with them. So keeping that in mind, you're playing with different personalities, different characters, people with different expectations, or even different ideas of what magic is. You know, it's not always going to go smoothly in magic, and that's just a fact. That's just the way it goes. Now, normally when you do like street magic, like the street magic videos I did, there's a lot more preparation and there's a lot more takes. Like I am filming the same effect maybe three or four times to keep that one good clean effect plus the great reaction and chop it all together with some music to make it look good. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you're on live TV, things like this might happen. And so let this just be a little bit of encouragement to all you to know that, you know, not everybody's perfect and we do get things wrong sometimes and we, you know, almost end up looking like a complete fool on TV. But I thought it went pretty well and I think all in all it came off genuine and I knew my lines and I knew what I was saying. So I'm not entirely disappointed with this, but there were some really cringeworthy moments. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. Let's finish up the vlog right now. All right, so that was the performance on Breakfast Television. Now, I know what you're thinking. Fuck, right? I still have makeup on. I look like I'm wearing a filter mask. Look at me. I look like a geisha. Okay, I gotta get out of here.
So that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope it was a little bit informative for a lot of you people who had questions about either the TV performance or about preparation or about what do you do if stuff goes wrong and you just deal with it. Honestly, you just run through it and hope, hope for the best. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to leave a comment below about your thoughts about this episode. It really helps out. And hit the like button if you did enjoy this or learn something from it. And we'll see you next time.